Hey guys, welcome back to Terraria. Now, I'm not joined today by Tom, Lewis, or Duncan. Instead, between sessions, I decided to come on on my own and have a go at uh, redesigning and rebuilding our communal crafting area. Because at the moment, everyone's got their own interests, their own base, and that's where most of the stuff is stored. But if I can build a nice communal area with lots of chests and all of our crafting benches and supplies and tools, we can get a bit more cohesion going and uh, have a nice communal space to check things out. Now, as you can see, I'm at my mob farm, which is my minecart along these rails. We've got a pit of lava above us and a pit of lava below. And what I do is I kind of just ride past on my cart and pick up all the sweet, sweet loot. It's a pretty effective farming technique. And it looks like in the background, the sun's starting to rise. So let's head over and use the daylight that we have to redesign the communal area. Now, this episode is going to be mostly time lapse because building takes a long time in Terraria. Especially considering I have pretty lame tools. I've only got an Invar hammer. But do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna store all my crap in these chests for the time being and get on with the building. Right, so the first step is to tear everything down before I build it back up. And Tom has reported that monsters keep jumping over the lava pit, so I'm gonna take out some of these wooden platforms first. Let's get rid of that. Right, and now it's time to trash this place. Now, I'm gonna miss this place. It's been a nice little shack. We've got a couple of banners in here. It served as well. It was a great kind of starting base, but the truth is, out with the old and in with the new. There we go. Now, we're going to keep things super simple for this, um, for this building because it's very early in our playthrough. We've played a lot of hours, but still, Terraria is one of the biggest games known to man. The progression takes so long, and I wanted this to kind of still represent the fact that we have simple values at this point, and our gear is pretty crap. Right, we're almost complete. Now, what I'm going to do is I can't break the blocks underneath these chests just yet because they're really full. So I'm just going to use this area here where Edward is. And this is going to be the uh, the foundation for our base. And there we go, the cornerstone of Terraria Crafting, which is the furnace, the crafting bench, and the anvil. This is kind of where you start everything to begin with. So I'm going to open up the crafting grid and work out some pretty cool materials to get going with. Now, one of the first things we're going to do is get loads of grey brick. I'm probably going to turn a whole stack of our stone into grey brick. And I'm holding down right click now to fill up the stack really, really quickly. Oh god, we went over a stack. That's okay. So now with grey brick in my hands, I can make some grey brick wall. Oh, but check this out. I can use the grey brick to make a fireplace. That's going to warm us up in the cold nights. That sounds pretty cool. And also, what else? I can make a chimney stack. That's pretty cool too. Now I thought about a few designs for this building. Now was it going to be like a castle? Was it going to be like a keep? Something like that. But what I arrived at was the idea that this is basically our home. This is where we start, this is where we spawn. Pretty close to it, at least. So what I want to do is create something that looks like a house. So let's lay down some foundations, and I think the foundations are going to be wood. Let's just drag a stack of wood up here. Grey brick for the walls, and we're going to use wood for the rooftop as well. It's going to be a nice, I think, about two-story house. Because what I want this place to do is hold loads of chests to store all of our junk. A crafting area near the chest so that we have easy access to all of the crafting benches. But also I want to put a bedroom or two in there so that Brett the guide has somewhere to live. So let's put down some wood as a floor. There we go, perfecto. Okay, now it's time to put down some grey brick walls. But I only want the exterior walls to be made out of stone. I want the actual floors be made out of wood because that's much, much much more realistic thing to have in your house especially on like the first floor now this is going to be a two-story house but i also wanted to have a balcony and now i've come down here to tom's sawmill to get some pretty sweet furniture a keg might be cool we'll need some wooden beams a dresser sounds good and also we're going to grab some dark plank wall and some light plank wall oh man look at, i think the duck's trapped he is freaking out oh no he's good he's good Mischief managed. Now, it's important we get this done kind of quick, because the monsters will be coming on to knock on our door any second now. The sun's going down. Oh, then the music change signals that's about to happen. It's not too much of a problem, but as soon as evil eyes start to spawn... Oh, it's raining as well. Let's put down some torches for a bit of light. There we go, and our peak reef is almost complete. One thing we're going to do now as well, though, is we're going to use the hammer that we have to make some sloped blocks to make this roof look even more peaked. What you do is, with the hammer, 
you left click until you get the tile that you want. And luckily it's just two clicks to get a triangle piece of wood. And this looks great already. Now I'm known for building things in Minecraft, but Terraria is a totally different beast. Building in 2D is actually much harder than you'd think. Right, now it's time to head inside and do some building there. Alright, so now it's time to start thinking about interiors. So what I want to do is have a basement level to this as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to dig down and start to expand that a bit. I'm also going to see if I can find some gel. There we go. So I can make some torches to give us a little bit of light. These are only going to be placeholder torches because we're going to use some nice fancy ornate torches. There we go. Like perhaps some candelabras or some chandeliers. I think both of those would look really great inside our house, but for the time being, we're just going to stick with plain old torches just because this is the first building. This is the first build of the whole Druidaria series. And I really just want like a primitive place for people to come and craft. This isn't going to be like the Hotel California. It's just going to be uh, a pretty scrub nerd place to come and do your, um, do your crafting. Now one thing I have learned about crafting in Terraria, or rather building in Terraria, is that just like in Minecraft, it's all about patience. It's difficult to see early on what your build is going to look like. But if you stay true to your vision and keep persevering, after a while it'll start to come together. You've just got to have faith in yourself and your ability to build. Like with anything, the more you practice, the easier it gets and the better you become. Right, now it's time to start putting down some of the foundations for the basement. Now again, we're going to keep with the grey brick. Now the one thing I want to do actually before we, now that days come and we're not at risk outside anymore, although I didn't see any monsters so I guess they all fell into the lava trip and that did its job. What we're going to do is we're going to put the chimney in place now, get this, uh, get this placed, see how good it looks. Now I've never placed something like this before so I'm not sure how we're going to get it to look good. Yeah, no, I feel like we need to have some grey brick as foundation for this. We're going to put it near the top here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use the background to create a kind of stealth chimney stack. So I don't want to use main blocks because then we can't get through it. But if I use the grey wall that we have, I can give the illusion that this is happening in the background. There we go. Now we're fast running out of wall, but it's looking pretty good, I think. Right, I think we're going to use light planks and dark planks for the top two floors. So let's try that. That looks pretty good. But the transition here is proving to be a little bit tricky. We're just going to have to lightly tap in the light wooden wall. There we go. And now it's time to put the darker wall on the second floor. Now you always need more background wall than you think you do. But the cool thing is, no matter what you make your background wall out of, if you do make too many, you can always craft it back into exactly whatever it was. So wooden wall can be crafted back into basic wood. Pretty neat. And now we're going to have the bottom floor be, I think, stone. Ah yeah, this looks pretty cool. Sweet, now we're almost there. What I really want to do is use glass to create some natural background lighting. Also, we're going to have to break some of these pieces of wood because we're going to have some staircases along here as well. Now, if you do get your stairs a bit messed up, you can always use the hammer to change their direction or what kind of stair they are. Okay, so this is quite an easily traversable stairway all the way up to the top of the house. And the attic, of course, it's not going to have any stairs going up to it because it's the attic. What I want to do is put a ladder up there. And now the basement. So again, we're going to crack out the grey brick. Because this is a very primitive build and we're only using the most basic of materials. Grey brick is the easiest thing we can get hold of. That's what we're using right now. But the basement itself is going to be quite big. And we're going to need to dig down a few layers lower as well. Now we've got to be careful because the Hogwarts Express needs a lot of room. So you don't bash your head when you're coming down it. There we go, now time to test the Hogwarts Express. Make sure we've got enough room, enough headroom, to get by with the minecart. Fantastic, looks like it works. And now for the area in the basement, I'm going to use this planked wall. It's a combination of wood and stone, but it's the perfect aesthetic for a basement. We're going to need a lot of it though, because there's a lot of, a lot of space down here to fill in. That should be enough. Let's check it out. Perfecto. Now it doesn't look super amazing, so what we're going to do is we're going to bolster this with the wooden beams. Now I'm not quite sure how these work, but I 
Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so they are a background thing that adds a bit of structural integrity to the backing walls. And we're going to use these to actually brace the entire house. But another thing I want to do as well is put down a couple more layers of stone brick for the foundation. Because I don't think it looks quite beefy enough. And we're going to use these wooden beam backing blocks all through the house. Now let's see what they look like. Actually, I don't, I'm not sure if I want to ruin the aesthetic here, but actually, no, I think they look okay. Now again, some torches back here. In fact, what I might do is build down with the, uh, with the grey back wall and put the fireplace down at the bottom there. Nice! A rip-roaring fireplace to warm up the entire home. Oh, hey, look! It's party time! Looks like these guys are super happy that I've decided to jazz up this house, and I'm actually really happy with how it's looking as well. I'm not exactly sure what happens in Terraria when it, when it becomes party time, when the NPCs throw parties. Because it looks like that none of them sell anything different. No, wait, hang on a sec. This guy actually sells loads of different stuff. Now I've got one gold 60 from the mobs I farmed earlier. Maybe I could buy something cool. A summer hat. Pink thread. Now Edward's a tailor. Bundled party balloons. Two gold, a bit expensive for me. A balloon animal. Pretty cool. Silly sunflower petals. Silly sunflower tops. Silly sunflower bottoms. Oh man, I wish I had the gold to buy this stuff. Nope, it looks like I don't have much in the way to sell, but you know what? Never mind. These guys are going to throw parties all the time. And so the next time it happens, I can buy myself some new digs. Let's get on with decorating the house. Now, as you can see, Tom over here has a great idea for how you should set up your crafting benches. Basically, you have a platform above you with all of the chests. And we're close enough here to be able to reach inside and grab what we need. We can also use the, um, quick stack to nearby chests to automatically put all of our things into stacks in the right chest. So what we're going to do is build a platform just above head level, which is one, one, two, three, on the fourth block up. So I believe that should be right about here. And at this level as well. So now we have a multi-tiered crafting basement. And we're going to build some snazzy stairs to get us the hell out of Dodge as well. There we go, perfect. Now I want the bottom layer of the crafting area to have a different background wall. But I don't have access to anything else that looks kind of cool. So we're going to wait for a bit until I can make stone slabs. I'm not entirely sure how we do that. But it's time now to start crafting chests so that we can move things over. Now we've got golden chests here, but if I'm correct, they hold exactly the same amount of things as a gold chest. They hold exactly the same amount of things. Oh god, no bunny. They hold exactly the same amount of things as a wooden chest. So I don't see much point in crafting gold chests. They look cool. Uh, and if we had the gold, we definitely would. But for the time being, we're just going to make some wooden chests because they do the job just as well. Right, so I only have enough materials for three chests. But when the other guys come on and we start playing again in the next session, I can definitely get some more bars and we can start to make more chests for our collection. But for the time being, I think three chests is probably going to be okay. I can move these chests from up here down here as well, so we should be okay. So now it's time to start moving some of our crafting workbenches and things inside. So we want the furnace, the workbench, the iron anvil. These are all things that need to go inside here. And what we're going to do is put the furnace here, next to it, have the workbench, and then on top of a platform, so that it's all within range, we're going to have the anvil. There we go, perfect! And now when we press escape, we have access to everything from the anvil, the furnace, and the workbench. And it's all nice and close, and we're within range of the chests as well. So we can grab out what we need. Now we're going to make a loom, because they're super useful as well. A keg, we already have. We can put that down. But I'll need to talk to the guys next session to get them to agree to pull all of their crafting workbenches in one place. Now I'm going to add some finishing touches to this. I'm going to nip out to the desert near Lewis's house and get some sand, because the one thing our house is missing now is windows. All right, time to smelt some glass. So glass is just sand. We've also got some cactus, so if we wanted to make some cactus candles, that would certainly be something we could do, but of course it looks terrible 
So we're not going to bother. Boom, now we're turning all of the sand into glass because it's got no other use really. And what we really want are glass walls. Now what these letters do is put windows in behind the background. Now having windows in the basement doesn't make any sense, but certainly above ground, we can start putting in some fancy windows. There we go, there's one. Now it's night time at the moment, but certainly during the day, this is going to make it much easier to see. Now we're going to use wooden fences for the balcony. We'll need a second door for upstairs. And another table and chair for another guest to move in. Oh, and it looks like Willy the Travelling Merchant's here and Luke the Guide. Oh, what happened to Brett? I guess Brett's dead, baby. And Luke is back in business. Let's make sure that Luke lives in the right place. So Edward the Clothier lives down here. And Luke the Guide has moved in upstairs. Pretty cool. Let's go and talk to the Travelling Merchant. Ah, looks like Willy's over at the treehouse. Well, let's make a beeline over to the treehouse to see what he's got to offer. Oh, whoa, look at this stuff. So it looks like Willy the Travelling Merchant has a lot to offer. He's got a paint sprayer. Got a crimson cloak, which is a vanity item. An ammo box, which uses ammo usage by 20%. That's crazy. Life form analyzer, which displays the names of mobs. Stopwatch. A presserator automatically places actuators on placed objects. And a chalice can be placed. Wow. I'm not sure what any of these are really good for, so I'm not going to spend any money on them yet. And also, I've got not much gold. But what I'll do while I'm over here is give some of these dudes that live in the treehouse some windows. Now, eventually, I'll be able to give these houses their own little peaked roofs. But that'll come in future. Thanks for watching this episode, guys. It's far from complete because there's so much more furniture and stuff to go in here. Plus, we've only used the basic materials, but as you can see, we've got ourselves a pretty snazzy looking first basic house. This is somewhere where we can put all of our chests, we can come here to craft. The guide lives here, and also it's a pretty sweet place for us all to call our communal home. Once we get some silk, we can start making beds for ourselves, and we can have some pretty sweet slumber parties up here. And what I want to try and do is, in between the sessions that we record, do some building, because building while we're actually playing the game isn't really progression, it's, it's more about just jazzing up our place. But if I can build separate to the sessions that we record, as a group, we can do a lot more of the pure progression stuff while we have the numbers, so we can take on the bosses while we have four dudes. And I can work on my treehouse and the communal areas as well as the Hogwarts Express in the downtime. So hit like, don't forget to subscribe, click the bell to get notified of when more episodes come out. And until next time guys, that's it from me and Terraria. Take care.